we are gonna do a quick deep dive of the Riverpod package and how we can use it for state management. Um, I already covered a whole lot of concepts here in my previous video, but it's a bit dated now, but all the things I talked about in the video is still valid and you can use it as it is. So I'm gonna drop the link to the video in the description of this video. Okay, so in this video, we are gonna look into all the concepts of Riverport and how you are going to use it uh, for your state management and essentially because we are going to be using it throughout the series for the podcast app that we are building. So this video is to give you to understand the concept and then we are going to apply everything we've learned in this video into um, the couple of um, apps that we're going to be building. Okay, so let's grab a coffee and then we'll get started. And so we are on the documentation page of Riverpod. And as you can see, we are on Riverpod.dev. And here it talks about how Riverpod is a caching and data binding framework. So not necessarily a state management framework. It is a reactive caching and data binding framework. What it means is that it caches your data and allows you to bind data reactively. That means um, if something changes everywhere, you're watching that thing changes as well. And basically I've explained what Riverpod is about, but you can go over to the documentation here. So I'm more concerned about how to use this. And if you want to understand the concept, uh, feel free to go over here. So um, let's go into the docs. And I would want to switch to the documentation for version two. It's still in progress, but uh, there are a couple of things here that we can use. Now, up here, there are two options, code generation, flutter hooks. So in my previous video, I talked about uh, all the concepts but here I'm going to go a bit further and then we're going to explore the code generation aspect of Riverpod. Yeah. So you can always read the motivation behind Riverpod and the likes, but it's quite simple to use and you'll see that in a bit. Okay, so I have created a project and I have my emulator right here. So I'm gonna run the default project that I've created. Let's drag this down a bit. And while that is running, we can go back here. So, um, this is a snippet for if you want to search for something and like, like you have a URL from the server, and then you want to type something as you type, you fetch new result based on what you've uh, done. And you can see the sniper to do that is just uh, as simple as this. So that shows you how powerful river bodies. And so let's go to get started. And how do you install that? So there are versions of river pod. So you can decide to use Flutter hooks with your Riverpod, but in this tutorial, we're not going to do that. So as I mentioned, you can use Riverpod without code generation or use Riverpod with code generation. Personally, I'd advise that you always use Riverpod with code generation because number one, you don't have to think about type of provider that you want to use. So it's basically you creating your function and then annotate it with Riverpod and Riverpod will figure out what type of provider it's going to use. So it saves you a lot of trouble. And also um, in future, if a 
um, if the package creator wants to do some updates with code generation, you just need to just run the generator again and you have new versions. So that way. So you have a couple of dependencies that we need. So for the dependencies, we need the Flutter River pod and River pod annotation. So I'm going to copy that and then put that in a prospect.yaml file. So I'm going to do this and just paste it here. And the next thing is I need these dev dependencies. So we have the build runner that is going to run the code generator for you. And then we have river for generator. We have links and then custom links. So this river pod links allows you to just conform to some set of rules that river pod suggested. So we're going to do that. So we have to do that in our dev dependency. I'm going to remove the custom links, uh, the flutter links that comes with it. And then we use this river pod links. Okay. So we are good to go. So I'm going to refresh again and then we're back. Okay. So you can enable the link, but that, that's not the whole point of this video. We can just get a, so to run a code generator, all you gotta do is doing this and that's it. We have Riverboard in our project, but um, I, that's not all. Um, so let's get started. Um, okay. The first thing we need to do is to put in provider scope. So you go here in your project and you find your main dot dart and you just wrap this by a widget and we're going to give it a provider scope. Oh, there you go. Okay. And then um, I want to add something, but, but we can talk about it later. Okay. So now that we've added provider scope, I am going to show you something. So to create a provider, it's as simple as this. So Riverport has providers that helps you provide some data. So let's say you want to provide some sort of data. We just create a provider. So for example, we can say we are creating a provider. You can see. So let's say we want to provide a string and we are going to say hello world. So this um, thing automatically creates and um, it creates a provider that is going to provide you with a low world. So now, how do you use that in your widget? It's simple. You just need to convert this to a consumer widget. It comes from provider. So consumer widget allows the widget tree to listen to changes on provider. So the UI automatically updates when that is needed. So, but when you extend consumer widget, you need to provide in a widget ref because you are going to be using this widget ref to watch your provider. So let's say we want to get our string value. It's going to simply be ref.watch and we are going to watch this provider, which will give us hello world and simple we can put in our value here and we will get a low world so let's remove this const uh oh yeah we gotta put it in the string yeah okay so it's saying no provider scope found it's because we've not uh, refreshed our app so it doesn't know that we have provider scope so we go back and we see that we have hello world. 
So, so that we, we can confirm that it's working. Hello world, how are you doing? And reload, and we have hello world, how are you doing? Okay, it's easy, but now the problem is we are not using code generation here. So instead of figuring out, should we use a provider or state provider? Or do we use a notifier provider? Because there are a lot of providers that you've uh, has opinionated for you. So um, that's why it's good to use a Riverpod code generation. And we're gonna see how to do that. So to do that, we simply need to annotate um, a function with the river pod annotation. So let's see how to do that. So we are going to do the same logic we have, but this time, instead of doing this, let's just uh, comment this out. We're just gonna say, oh, I have a function that I want to return a string. Uh, simple as that, see? So a function that is going to just return hello world. So this is a function, but um, here to let Riverpod know, you can let's say hello world ref. Don't worry, Riverpod doesn't know what it is yet, but it's going to tell you what it is. So now basically we just create a function that returns hello world, how are you? And then we just gonna annotate it with Riverpod. So you see, it's coming from Riverpod annotation. And now to use code generation, we're just going to put a part main.g.dart. So we're telling it that once, once you do your code generation, put all the generated code in this file, it's needed. And then we save. And then we go back here and do this. We are putting the watch keyword here so that anytime we save, it's going to run a view drone again. So let's go to the terminal and then we put the command. Yeah, we can use that run, but uh, this will work too. And we give it a minute. And yeah, we have the main that g dot dart here. So let's go into the file and what has it done? It has created an auto dispose provider for us, which means that this provider we auto dispose by itself. So we didn't have to create this. And the function we are looking for is hello world provider. So basically it has created added provider to the name of the function. So if you want to use it, we are just going to use hello world and put provider at the back. So we have hello world provider and save that and we are good to go. Yay. So we have our first provider. And so another way we can show this value is we can let's revert this back to a stateless widget okay and then we remove this widget ref that we pass to the build method here we can wrap here for example we can wrap the center with a widget called consumer and consumer requires a builder. So let's revert this back. And instead of wrapping with the widgets, we just wrap with a builder instead. And then we can replace this builder with consumer. And then inside the build method, it expects a widget ref. So we can say ref 
and we can put the, this here. So let's move this final value here. And then we have ref that watch inside here. Okay, so someone might ask that um, what is the difference between having extended consumer widget? So you're just using the consumer widget here itself, the builder. Okay, so let's assume that we have a column here. And then we have a container and we have a container again here. Um, everything has gone, but uh, no worries. So let's say we have this, for example. So let's say we have three widgets here and then we are listening to Hello World Provider, but we want only the action to update we want just want this text to update we don't want whatever is here to update whatever is here to update it makes sense to do it like this because if you put this ref or watch at the top here and then it extends a consumer widget and then you are watching at the top here it anytime there's a new change is going to reload all these old old widgets so um but here only this text is going to repute re um it looks like a small thing but when you have a really big widget and then you have unnecessary rebutes everywhere it's going to uh, be a problem and so this is the basic of um, riverpod so you have learned how to create um, a simple provider, how to watch that provider. Okay, so that is the core concept of Riverpod itself. And then we are going to extend to see all the providers and when to use them. And we are going to learn how to use them exactly in the project that we are going to build. So this is the end of the second episode. So catch me in the next one. We are we are going to you are going to see the ui of what you have built and then we are going to be using feature provider we're going to learn about the feature provider and exactly see how to use that in the project okay so catch you in the next episode we'll see you don't forget to like subscribe and to turn on the notification bell to see when i drop the next episode cheers See you.